Hi hey everyone, I would like to take a chance to put all the exponent rules in one place. We just went through the first two, but we need to add the rest of the list. And I want to go through those and give you an example of why they are what they are. So this doesn't just feel like a whole bunch of memorization. Hopefully a lot of these rules make sense. So you don't really have to work very hard to remember them. All right, so we already talked about raising numbers to the zero gives one. I will add a note here. This doesn't hold if x is equal to zero. Zero to the zero is actually undefined. That's not going to come up a ton until calculus. We talk about that a little bit and it gets really interesting, but just so you know, you're not supposed to raise zero to the zero. And we talked about our negative exponents. So let's go ahead and work on raising a product to a power. So if you have a product of two things and you raise it to a power, I would say it never hurts to go back to the basics with these. So let's say we have two times three to the fourth as our example. This means you have a two times three multiplied by itself so that there are four of them. And the rule with multiplication is you can rearrange order as much as you want. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. So we can rewrite that as two times two times two times two, and then three times three times three times three. And that is where we're getting this two to the fourth times three to the fourth. So again, if in doubt, start writing it out for yourself. I think even just getting to here or visualizing that, you don't even have to write it out if you can picture it in your head. You'll hopefully see that you'll end up with uh, four twos and four threes multiplied together. So that is where this rule comes from. Uh, basically you can run exponents through products. You wanna be really careful with this. This absolutely does not hold for x plus y. This is not true in general, and we will see this one in action in your next lesson. But a good example is x plus y squared means x plus y times x plus y. So again, it's always good to go back to basics if you're not sure. And this we'd need to foil out. So we'll get an x squared plus an xy and another xy and then plus a y squared. So you get this x, y, x, y in the middle that you'll lose if you try and distribute powers. So powers do not distribute across addition, but they do distribute across multiplication and division. And division is our next example. And I would look at that the same way. What if we had 2 fifths cubed? That really means 2 fifths times itself and times itself once more. And again, you can rearrange multiplication division as well. You can rearrange the order here, but if we multiply straight across, we've got two times two times two on the top and five times five times five on the bottom, which is two cubed over five cubed. That does not look like a three, let's fix it. Okay, so powers can um, distribute across multiplication or division. The next one also involves powers and products, but this time the bases are the same, but the powers are different. So we could say we have two to the third times two to the fourth. And a lot of times people remember that they should either multiply or add, but get mixed up on which one it is. So again, go back to the basics. Two cubed is two times two times two. Two to the fourth is same idea with one more two. If you're multiplying seven twos together, that's a two to the seven. So if you forget these rules, just go back to something simpler and try and sort it back out and then you should be in good shape. Similarly, if we have two cubed over two to the fourth, that's two times two times two and then four of them in the bottom. Uh, here we can cancel. We can cancel a bunch of those twos out. Two divided by two is one. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1. The is 1 is really important because that means there's not a 0 left on the top. Uh, there's not nothing on the top. You can't bring the 2 out of the denominator. There's a 1 left on the top and a 2 left on the bottom. And the rule says you should subtract powers. And that's true. Uh, if we do 3 minus 4, we get 2 to the negative 1. 
which is one half, but I actually rarely think of the rule that way. I usually think of it as canceling. It's much easier for me to sort out uh, in a lot of problems. If there's a lot of negative exponents floating around, then I might go back to subtraction. But I think about it this way a ton. Just to give you one more on this, if we had two to the fifth on top and two squared on the bottom, that's five twos on the top and two twos on the bottom. So again, if we start canceling, we've gotten rid of two of them. There's three left in the top. So this is like a two cubed over one. You don't have to write divided by one. That doesn't make a difference. It absolutely makes a difference that that one is in the top in the first one because otherwise we lose our fraction. But here it doesn't matter either way. And there again, you can see that five minus two does give us three. So the subtraction rule totally works, but when I can, I try and think about it as canceling. Last one here, let's say we have three squared and then we raise that, in fact, I don't wanna write this so many times, let's say we have five squared and we raise that to the third, so my powers aren't quite so big. Remember that five squared is five times five, and that when we cube that, we have to write three of those out, and if we count all of those up, that means six fives. So we multiply powers. If you have something with a power and then you raise that whole thing to another power, you have to multiply. But again, if possible, try and think through what those powers mean and make this less of a memorization and more of an understanding how exponents work. All right, hopefully that helps.